Time to do some pet stuff because pets are now useful. Let's throw you and you in the- Oh, gee. Oh, my God. Yo, you. <laughs> Damn, they really like this containment facility now. So, I've added some mods to my game that makes pets useful. And I have some other stuff I need to go over with you guys. As well. Damn, they're freaking out. They really like this now. Before, they didn't do anything. Uh... <laughs> First an intro. Welcome back to Subnautica. We have a ton of stuff to go through and I'm so happy I checked out the mod manager because they've added some new mods. Now there was actually one that I thought changed the size of models and if that was the case I was going to be super happy because I was going to show you guys just how impractical it would be to have a submarine the size of the Atlas by making a Cyclops the size of an Atlas. How Atlas. Wow. Atlas. However, it's not a it's not the case. It just changes the icon size and I ended up with uh items that were like taking up my whole screen. That's besides the point. Oh, we have water being made. Hell yeah. Where is that? I think it's upstairs. So anyways, I want to go into these mods with you and on top of that, there was a potential leak for the Arctic DLC storyline and I'm going to cover some of that. But I'm going to be very vague about it, and I don't even think I'm going to name the characters that were involved in it, just a general outline of it, because it's been fixed now, but on the translation side, you know, on their site where they had things translated, apparently something was still open. Actually, I think it was another content creator by the name of Play Tariq, or whatever is, I, I can't, I probably pronounced that wrong. I suck with pronunciation. But his, he came up in the chat, and he was telling the devs about how, like, he had access to this thing, and then Obraxis was like, I'm gonna just disable that real quick because that's a big boo-boo. And, well, that kind of ruined the fun because we could have really had an inside scoop on some of the stuff happening with the Arctic DLC. So I'm gonna get into that in just a couple minutes. Let me get organized a bit and prepare to show you guys some incredibly useful stuff. So like I started with, the first thing I want to go over is the, I guess helpful pets mod that you can currently get now they don't really do too too much right now but it's okay because it's a start to the mod now what this mod does is specific plants are required to be present in the containment before you can put down specific eggs of different creatures once you have those plants in here you can put the eggs down and then those eggs will start to flourish and you can see it like they're they're completely freaking out more than i've ever seen them freak out before i don't remember the crab squid egg like being this this <sighs> robbing and it's kind of gross Maybe it was this throbbing before and I just didn't pay attention to it, but I mean, damn, this is, this is crazy. Like the thing almost smacked my jaw when I threw it down into the, uh, into the tank. But once you have the things that you need, so in this case, I needed the blood oil and I needed the kush thingies as well. Once you have those, well, then you can actually put these eggs down and they will start their process of hatching. And obviously you can have more ingredients required per creature. Now, once these guys hatch... These ones particularly will generate electricity while in here. I assume in the future they want to make it so different creatures have different abilities. So maybe like if you spawn stalkers in, in their facility with the right plants and stuff, well then when they come through, you can take them out with you and somehow and maybe use them as like permanent pets or something that will follow you around and even fight for you and defend you, so on and so forth. It's really cool and I think they could expand this even more than what they have right now where they'll generate some electricity and everything will be all la di da you know oh look we're, we're gonna make some power for you which i mean it's good to have them pull their own weight and not have to sacrifice the eggs to the uh to the power generator over there now they do have a lot of plans as well to add on to the mod and make it even better than what it currently is and what's stated i guess in the in the whole nexus mod manager thing and there's a lot of ingredients that you can actually require for different things to make the game harder or easier depending on how you want to play and the size of the creature will basically dictate how effective they are if you have a small crab squid and then you have a big one well the big one's generating more power for you more or less along with those electric eel things but it's it's really cool i strongly suggest you check it out i'm gonna see if this mod's working we'll pay these guys a visit in about half an hour to see if they've finished incubating and if they have hatched or not now, as for me, there's another mod I wanted to show you guys. I got to go upstairs, actually, to where you hear all the water because there's this is actually a really useful mod, and I like this a lot because it's so frustrating to have no option for this, and I don't know why the Subnautica devs didn't add this in. So, 
I see that? The, the, I think that's the power generator I have upstairs, but this right here is the filtration machine, and it has filtration complete, so I can actually take these out now, and it'll continue making water, you know, constantly, and drain power from my base. It's just insufferable to have this many in here because you have to have a consistent uh, supply of power. And I mean, then if I go over to one of my lockers, uh, possibly this one, possibly this one, you can see I have more water than I know what to do with. Like I'm at a, I have an excess of H2O. Well, like, what I can do since I don't need any is I can actually toggle them off. Look at that. It just shuts them off and it makes them do no noise at, or make no noise at all. And on top of that, your power consumption is no longer a thing. And if you want to start them back up, just click again. A couple seconds, bam, it's back on and it's making water for you. Now, amazingly, this also works for the floodlights. This guy right here is on and this one right here is on as well. Well, I can actually toggle the floodlight so it's off and no longer draining power. And this guy right here, I think I can too. Yes, I can. So you can actually turn the lights on and off, so on and so forth, because these guys, these suckers take a lot of power. They take a ton of power to work and operate so that's actually a really good addition to that but i guess when you add it in with the alien containment facility we have down here now you don't really need to worry about your power to ah oh, crap it's in the other one you don't really have to worry about your power consumption that much but i mean still it's it's a really nice gesture to have now i do know in my last video you guys pointed out that i missed a time capsule uh, while I was exploring the deep sea, I, I can't believe I missed it. I feel so stupid because I was looking for one too. Look at that. They're growing really fast. The plants, I mean. Um, the eggs are probably going to hatch really soon too since they have the ideal conditions now. But I can't believe I missed that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I can find it. I probably never will to be honest with you because it's, it's way out there somewhere. And uh, we'll continue from there. I think I had one more thing I wanted to show you guys too. That's right, I do have one more thing to show you guys. However, because of a mod incompatibility, I can't actually make them right now. So we'll go back to that in a second and I'll show you those as well. I'll have to disable, I think, one of the mods that I have currently running. It might be conflicting with it. I think I know what one it is too. I'm pretty sure it's this ability to turn on and off objects at a whim. I'm, I think that's the mod that's, com that's incompatible with it. So we'll have to check that out just a moment however i am going to go get the time capsule and see what kind of goodies i have so if i'm right it's just down around here somewhere should be time caps y'all i think it was no it wasn't down this far i remember the vent though zelan said it was at 35 minutes into my video i missed it and it's so hard to see crap down here Oh, there it is right there. Yes. Hi. How you doing, gorgeous? So that's what I was looking for. I'm going to scan it first. Actually, no, because I already have all my blueprints. I used a cheat to get... Oh, God. What? No. Get, get, get. Oh, get the hell out of here, man. What the hell you doing? Freaking thing flew up in my face. Let's see what we got. Give me some goodies. In times of darkness. And then a really nice screenshot of just darkness. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Ion-powered artificial light. And then they gave us a nice ion battery. Oh, that's really... That's actually a valuable battery, too. That's going to help me out a little bit. Damn. Well, thank you for leaving behind that for me. I appreciate that. I'd like to find some more time capsules, but I just don't have time to do that. What I should do... <laughs> I don't have time to find time capsules. Oh, what the... What is hit? What was that? Something just tentacle slapped me. I wasn't really receiving of that. Okay, whatever. I'm gonna head back here. I should, by now, have some hatched eggs, and I should be able to see if they're generating power or not, like they should. Which would be great if they are. And then I'm gonna talk about some of the storyline, and we're going to check out the last thing, if it works again, that I can show you guys. Here we go. I should be able to dock you up right here. There you go, little guy. Get up in there. Hell yeah. Now let's go see if these have hatched. Yes! We've got some hatching right now. Wow, they're actually big. These ones are taking a while, though. Oh, look at the broken egg bits. Oh, that's cool. And they're really big, too. It looks like we have consistent power generation, but that might just be from the reactor rods. Now, these guys are taking a while, and it's actually kind of concerning me that they're taking so long to hatch. I don't know if there's a difference in the in the two of the creatures or not for the hatching times. I don't think I messed up what I needed for them. 
However, I do know I need a drink and I need one really bad. So I'm just going to get over here real quick and grab that. I can turn these lights off now too. So let me just toggle you. You're probably what's draining all the power. I'll leave that. No, I won't leave the spotlight on. We can turn that off too. Really nice mod. I love that. We needed that. We needed that in the main game. Grab you right there. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam. There we go. And that's basically set to go. These guys are powered off still. That's good. Which they do save states, by the way. Let me just go back in here now and see if I can. Are you hatched? No, you're not. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I have absolutely no idea. I'm going to get back in my submarine. Come on, little guy. Let's go down. We got some stuff to do. We've got some very important... What's that? I see. Um, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go over the storyline stuff now, and I want to make it clear to you guys that one, I'm leaving parts of this out because I don't really want much of this going out, and two, I'm gonna be pretty vague about it because, again, I don't want to be that guy that has a bunch of the stuff going out and yeah, hey, look at this, guys, because. Everything is subject to change anyways, and 99.9% .9 chance they will change it because, I mean, they're just writing up ideas. It's not the guaranteed, this is what's going to happen to Subnautica, and this is what happens in the Arctic DLC, okay? So, yeah, just a heads up for you guys. So, to my understanding, one of the things we can basically confirm is there's going to be a lot of objects that we have in the current Subnautica build within the expansion of the Arctic DLC. And a lot of the resources as well are going to transfer over from that based on some of the stuff that was actually seen uh, within translation stuff. Now, I'm not sure of how much was actually in this because I actually didn't get the chance to see any of this translation stuff. I didn't even know it was a thing until uh, recently, actually. But what I do know is that there was talk about a special type of mutation which I would assume follows the suit of the Karar virus and what we are infected with currently. Now, the Karar virus itself is a deadly virus. You die from it. It's, it's designed basically to kill you. It kills all life on the planet, more or less, or at least it, it attempts to until you meet the Sea Emperor and all that stuff. Now, this mutation, I can only assume since I was given the information that it, you have to think more like the Half-Life storyline, to my knowledge, I think the Half-Life storyline takes place in a Portal storyline too, or something's interconnecting between those universes or something like that. So keep it in mind that when they describe this as being something of like a Half-Life-esque uh, expansion where they follow like a similar suit, when you think of the Half-Life universe and how things are interconnected through that with various different games, why are you not hatched yet? You should be hatched. I'm not a bad parent. I just don't know what you need. Apparently it's not the blood. Maybe they're not grown enough. Maybe you need bigger blood oil. That could be it. I'll wait around a little bit longer. I think these are at max size now almost though. But no, when you think about Half-Life and their universe, and then you compare it to Subnautica, it would make sense if the mutation ties more into natural selection now. It would make sense... Because they've been pointing towards it all along, and then they completely changed the name of the Karar. They used to spell it C-A-R-A-R-R, -R -R, I think, or something, or A-A-R, to K-H-A-R. I, I can't spell, like, crap. But you, you get the idea. Like, they completely changed it. Now I get crap because of my video titles from the past where, like, it was spelled with the C instead of the K, and people are like, you don't know how to spell, ah! Which I still don't know how to spell, arguably, but, I mean, I would have at least not had that giant mess up if everything in the game wasn't changed to be more in line with natural selection. But I believe that we're going to see more elements of natural selection within the expansion based off of this reveal of a mutation more so. Because, I mean, right now, we don't see mutations per se. We see green boils and globules, but, like, we don't see mutations. We don't see anything dramatic happening with the wildlife here on the, on the planet. We don't see anything dramatic happening with us. And obviously, I have the name, well, at one name of someone that they were considering for the expansion stuff, but I'm 90% sure that they're going to change the name anyway, so I'm not going to give out the uh, the name, and I don't think it's information they would really... I think that's something they would care about if if they gave that out. I mean, I, I think anyone can connect the dots, natural selection, and Subnautica, and the expansion, and how they've been trying deliberately to link the two even more with a stronger link coming from the Karar change. 
You guys see that? Oh, that must be a bug. The water's too big in the moon pool. It's a Durasting, but like you can, anyone, anyone with a brain can come to that conclusion if they really want to dive into the Subnautica expansion. So mutations and something else, which again, they could possibly change. I'm still waiting for these guys to hatch. I'm just going to wait around for a bit and see if they do hatch. All right, whatever. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit. I want to know what you think about this whole, this whole storyline thing within Subnautica and the Arctic DLC ideas and stuff that they have. Unfortunately, the translations are no longer available. And it's for good reason, too. I mean, one, spoilers, and two, uh, the issue of, well, they're going to change a lot of the stuff anyway, so why give people a job of translating when what they translated will probably be replaced with something else that's more accurate for a storyline? Yeah! Anyways, I will be back. So I got frustrated, and I decided to use a speed sheet, and I've waited around for roughly 20 minutes for in-game time to pass by at like five times or something like that, and they haven't hatched. So I assume, one, the mod is definitely working because these won't hatch, and two, well, I've never tried to hatch these things anyways. Maybe there's something special you need, you need within the game itself, but two, um, I, I, uh, it's, it's, mm, it's frustrating. <sighs> All right, whatever. Guys, I'm going to move into a, the last piece of this video that I want to show you guys because I thought it was kind of nifty to have, and I think you guys would appreciate having something like this as well. So we're going to uh, we're gonna do that. I got to close out of my game to do this, unfortunately. So see you in a minute. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys were these base clocks, which I thought looked really good and suited Subnautica's theme a lot. Now, these are custom modeled, I believe, and I will say they do fit the theme of Subnautica really well. They they basically tell the in-game time for you, and is there anything right now that tells the in-game time? Not that I can think of off the top of my head, so that's actually really good. You get an idea of when it's going to be day, when it's going to be night. Now, right now, it's showing, I guess, 3 o'clock at night, and then if we speed up time, so at 12.13 in the afternoon... Yes. Okay, so it is synced then with the time of day, which is really good. So you get a better idea of how long you have before the sun goes down, and you can actually keep track of it maybe in a cyclops or, I don't know, just have something around where you can get to your, like, Seamoth fast and stuff like that. But I, I like the idea of this. It lets you know when you can stay out and when you can come back in. I think it'd be especially cool if you had to, like, follow d uh, timers for, like, dangerous creatures where, you know after maybe seven o'clock when it gets super dark or something like that there are really dangerous creatures out there that will start spawning and it, it's just super dangerous to be on this planet in dark water at night and then you have to use you have to utilize these basically to survive that'd be super cool to me the last thing i want to touch base on with you guys is this thing right here i was dm this by like two different people yesterday and they seem to think it's for subnautica and the arctic dlc unfortunately no again it's not some people are actually circulating this in my discord server thinking that hey this might be one of those things so i think someone's trying to bamboozle us again uh this doesn't look to be anything for subnautica and it was copyrighted in 2011 and i don't think they were planted they're planning anything for the arctic dlc in 2011 to be honest with you i think subnautica I don't even think Subnautica was a thing. It might have been like an, an infant idea in the back of like Corey's mind or something like that. But like, I don't think it was actually <laughs> anything viable. Maybe for the original Subnautica, but I don't believe this is this is anything to be wary of at all or or think on. Because I mean, this comes from an artist. Actually, they're really talented. Uh, so I will say that it is a really good looking thing. But Ken Bartholom me. Something like that. They're a character designer. And they have a lot of cool stuff. I love some of this stuff, actually, that they have as concept art. However, nah, I don't think any of it. Ooh, that looks really cool. Damn. That is awesome. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think that picture has anything to do with Subnautica. So I... <laughs> please stop passing around these fake images, hoping I'll think that they're real things when they're not. <sighs> Anyways, guys back in subnautica that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did remember to leave a like on the video you guys have been killing it lately i appreciate it hopefully you found some of the stuff in this video useful as well our things have not hatched yet. oh wait yes they have hatched now because i disabled the mod hmm interesting so if i re-enable the mod they should generate power it's a little bit cheaty though 3125 power Ah, oh, interesting
Very interesting, actually. All right. Let me know your thoughts. And I will see you in the next video.